baby fetus looking Freddy Krueger thing. Oh, this movie is so strange. How do I even explain this one? You guys are not even gonna believe it. Peace fire onto the grave. Whatever, we're just gonna fly past that because that is the least of our worries at this point in the series. Today I have a bit of a fun video. So I have, for your viewing pleasure, watched every Freddy Krueger movie the past week and every time I close my eyes I see him and every time I go to bed I'm having nightmares about Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. This is going to be a two-part video. So today I'm going to explain every single Freddy Krueger movie to you. How he comes back to life, how he dies, how they defeat him, what happens in each movie, how they're different, how they're similar, all that sorts of good stuff. And then in the second part of this video, which will probably be out next week, I'm going to actually rank every Freddy Krueger movie from worst to best or best to worst. I don't know, I haven't figured that out yet. And that one, I will go over iconic scenes of each of them, what I like about the films, some of them what I don't like about the films, um, how Freddy changes, and quotes that I love. So two very different videos, however, all about Freddy Krueger, because I guess he's the theme of this 31 days of October since this is already the second video that I'm doing of him and we're 10 days in. So let's just jump right in because we have a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. Let me tell you, it gets weird. It gets very strange. There are the, the weirdest things happen in this movie where you're just like, who wrote this? And I cannot wait to share them with you because I don't think that a lot of people have seen every single Freddy Krueger movie. I don't think I've seen every single scene. Like I've definitely seen parts of each one but definitely I don't think sat down and watched every single movie and it is a strange ride. I could not make this stuff up if I tried so I'm really excited to share this with you and have you guys sitting there going wait really? So let's start with our first Nightmare on Elm Street. This movie was made in 1984. This is our first Freddy Krueger. This one of course stars Nancy. Nancy is a woman, a young girl that lives on Elm Street. She's having nightmares about Freddy's. Freddy's? About Freddy. Her friends are having nightmares as well and they are slowly dying off. Her parents let her know that Freddy was actually a child killer who was killing, who killed I think about 20 kids on Elm Street. The parents banded together because he got off on a technicality, took matters into their own hands, set him on fire and killed him. So now his way of getting revenge is coming back to these children in their dreams and killing them in their dreams. When they die in their dreams, they die in real life. So that is the general story of A Nightmare on Elm Street, most of them in fact. Let me fix the light. Hopefully that helped a little bit. But anyways, um, it's one of the only movies I can think of, well it's the only movie I can think of in fact, where you follow a main character and they die off 20-30 minutes in and then the main character switches and we move on from there. So um, that happens in the first Nightmare on Elm Street with Tina. We follow Tina at first, she dies, and then Nancy takes over. So here's where we get our imagery of Freddy Krueger, our boiler room, our children, the, the song, and then here we're also introduced to campy Freddy Krueger. Uh, we get a sense of who he is. He's a child killer, but he's also like this silly, campy serial killer as well. Here obviously, like I mentioned, we find the backstory of Freddy Krueger, which is, you know, how he came to be who he was. This will be delved into more in later films. In this one, the ending is kind of left open for interpretations. It kind of has like that typical 80s horror movie ending where you're like, did it happen? Did it not? Was that a dream? I don't know. Where at the end, Nancy actually goes and meets her friends who have previously died because the way that she defeats him in this movie is by turning her back on him and telling her, telling him essentially that she's not scared of him and he has no power over her and because of that he's unable to attack her so after he dies um, she comes out and the day's all bright and lovely and she gets in the car with her friends but then the top comes up and it's red and green the car's acting a little funny and then at the very end uh, Freddie or er, Nancy's mother is torn through one of the windows and you're kind of left with this is Freddy really dead? 
He's not. Spoiler alert. Now, what I will say about this movie is there are iconic, iconic scenes. It's such a great 80s horror film, but it's not a perfect movie. There are scenes that don't make sense. There's some scenes that you're just like, why did that happen? That's strange. But all in all, a great movie for the time and just an absolute classic. I mean, let's be honest. And it started this entire Freddy Krueger mania. So now let's talk about Night A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. This one is called Freddy's Revenge and it came out in 1985, which is just a year after the original. Now in this one, Nancy is no longer in the story and instead we have a boy named Jesse. Jesse has actually moved into Nancy's house. So that is how he gets kind of entangled in the Freddy saga. Now before we begin, let's just get this out of the way. This is considered one of the gayest horror films. Those are not my words. Uh, but there are some imagery and there is a lot of information about how the cast and crew work together to make it that way. For example, in one scene, Jesse sleepwalks to a gay bar. There's other scenes too. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, that is actually a reason why a lot of people don't like this film. And if you are interested in learning more information about that, there's actually an entire documentary out on Shudder about this. I think it's called Scream Queen? something like that. And it talks about how that actually led to the downfall of the actor's career. I, d I haven't watched it yet. I don't know all of the information, but that is all I know about it. But regardless of any of that, it's actually a film that I do enjoy, although it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, I grew up watching one and two a lot. It's still a film that I do enjoy. So in this one is really interesting, much different than the first. So instead of Freddy Krueger haunting people in their dreams, Yes, he does start haunting Jesse in his sleep and kind of comes into like kind of almost like possess Jesse in a way and use Jesse's body to get into the world so that Jesse can actually go and kill people. So that's why this movie freaks me out so much. The thought of dying in my sleep because someone killed me, yes, that's creepy, but the thought of someone taking over my body and me killing my friends and people that I know is far creepier. So I think that for this one, the idea was really cool, maybe not executed so great. This one is a little confusing because there's no real reasons for the killing. For example, like a coach dies, some random kids at a pool party die. I mean, there's just... It's not like a planned Freddy Krueger type movie. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense as far as the killings go. However, Freddy Krueger does get a bit more screen time in this one as opposed to the first one. And also in this one, I will say, instead of the people dying in their sleeps, um, Jesse just has to fall asleep. Freddy kind of possesses him and then the killings actually happen in real time. So that's definitely a difference too, but not, I don't think it's terrible for a remake. I don't hate this movie the way that a lot of people do. <laughs> so now let's move on to A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. This one is called Dream Warriors and this one was out in 1987. This one actually, Heather Langenkamp returns as Nancy. She revises her role as Nancy and she is now working at a mental health clinic with a lot of children who have attempted suicide. We'll get to that in a minute. But she is actually um, studying dreams and she's actually taking pills, uh, experimental pills to suppress her dreams. So she herself is no longer being affected by Freddy, but she comes into this mental institution and she's starting to realize that the children are. So her, along with the therapist, work together to try to figure out how to stop Freddy Krueger. So this one is interesting because it's making it look like the kids are killing themselves. We find out that they are actually the last children left of Elm Street, which is why Freddy is targeting them. But there's also a nun that comes around who's talking to the other uh, therapist that Nancy is working with. And she's telling, she's explaining the story of how a long time ago the hospital was open and a woman got locked in with the patients and no one knew she was in there. She was locked in there during the holidays and she was raped and brutalized by the convicts. That individual turned out to be Amanda Kruger, who was Freddy Krueger's mother. So not only are we getting the story that he's a child killer, now we're going back a little bit and getting more of his, uh, you know, actual like origin story. So he is said to be the bastard son of a hundred maniacs. This nun explains that the only way that you can get rid of Freddy Krueger is by finding his bones and burying them in hallowed ground. The therapist goes and meets with Nancy's father, who is the one that knows the location of the bones. They find his bones, they bury it in this Oh, what do you call those things with the cars and they're crushed and they're all stacked on top of each other? Crushed car lot. 
place. I said crushed cat. Oh god, don't. I don't want to Google crushed cat. Junkyard! Within this room as well, we have the um, individuals who are in the uh, hospital and they figure out that like for example Patricia Arquette she's like the main leader of the children being affected by Freddy we find out that she can actually pull people into her dreams so you find out that each of the kids has like a super power that they can use in their drink in their dreams so their plan is to all work together to beat Freddy Krueger so that is what happens they're kind of beating him internally like in the dream world and then externally the uh, therapist and the cop nancy's father are trying to get his bones and bury them they bury his bones in the graveyard no in the car yard in the junkyard oh my gosh and they put holy water on it boom freddy's dead good shit however nancy actually dies in this one and then at the end we find out that the nun who is showing up to the therapist is actually, was actually the spirit of Amanda Krueger. This is where things get real weird. So next we have A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. This is the Dream Master and this was made in 1988. Oh, okay. Have a seat. Just have a seat while I explain to you how Freddy comes back. One of the individuals that was in the hospital in the third one, he is in this one. So three of the same people were in three and four. So they come back to revise their roles. And in his dream, he dreams of that junkyard. His dog comes into the dream with him. And the way that Freddy Krueger is reborn in this one is that the dog pees fire onto the grave that they buried Freddy Krueger's bones. And his fire causes a hole to open up and then Freddy's bones regenerate into Freddy. That's the explanation we get. So, uh, two of the three die off, so now Kristen is the only member, uh, child of Elm Street left. As we mentioned in the previous movie, she has the ability to pull people into her dreams. So, Freddy Krueger is trying to use her to pull in fresh meat so that he has more people to kill and he doesn't have to end his slaughter with just the children of Elm Street. 40 minutes in, our main character dies. And we have her friends now that are being affected by Freddy Krueger. It's interesting because our main character kind of, after each of her friends dies, starts absorbing pieces of them. The way that Freddy Krueger is defeated in this one is now our main character remembers this Dream Master poem. I think her name's Alice. This Dream Master's poem and it ends with evil will see itself and it shall die. And she shows Freddy Krueger like a mirror and he looks at himself and then he dies. So that is that. Next up we have A Nightmare on Elm Street 5. This one is actually called The Dream Child and oh goodness, just wait. So this one is a 1989 film. We have Alice and Dan who are from the fourth. <sighs> okay, how do I even explain this one? You guys are not even gonna believe it. Okay, there's a little baby fetus looking Freddy Krueger thing and he's born in a dream and he crawls into a sweater, Freddy Krueger sweater, and then he becomes Freddy Krueger. In this one, we get Amanda Krueger again. However, she is played by a different character, a different woman. But Alice is starting to see Freddy Krueger while she's awake. She ends up finding out that she is pregnant and it is told to us that about 70% of a fetus's life is spent dreaming. So that is how Freddy Krueger is able to get to her while she's awake. However, everyone else still needs to fall asleep in order for him to attack them. But <laughs> Freddy is feeding the unborn child the souls of Alice's friends that he is killing off to try to make the kid like him. Then the mom, Alice, is actually seeing her fetus son as a child in her dreams. So we find out that after Freddy Krueger's trial, trial, sorry, after Freddy Krueger's trial, Amanda Krueger goes missing and she was said to have killed herself, but it doesn't make sense because they say her body was never found, so I don't understand how they knew she killed herself. Whatever, we're just gonna fly past that because that is the least of our worries at this point in the series. So here we learn that um, we need to find Amanda Krueger's body to set her soul free. And this is actually interesting because this is the first movie that has Freddy Krueger in the scene with a child. He's not a real child. I mean, he's not a fake child, but he's like a child from the future. So it's not a real child, but then it kind of is. But he does have his first scene with like an actual child and all he's trying to do is use that child to lure him into like becoming like Freddy. Oh, this movie is so strange. At the end, the son unleashes all of whatever Freddy Krueger put into him, the spirits of 
be dead and kind of turns his back on Freddy and that's how Freddy dies because those spirits rip Freddy back into his fetus self. <laughs> and then they find Amanda Kruger's body which sets her spirit free and then Amanda Kruger absorbs fetus Freddy Kruger's spirit. Guys, I'm not making this up. This is really, really how these movies pan out. <laughs> and then it ends with Freddy Kruger's hand ripping through Amanda's stomach after she's absorbed his spirit. And we're not done yet. <laughs> okay, next we have one that is called, it doesn't have a Nightmare on Elm Street title, it is called Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. This is a 1991 film. So this one is definitely less of that 80s type campiness and much more a 90s film. Like it definitely has some 90s rock music instead of your typical synthy Freddy music. In this movie we have a boy who's a main character and he's supposedly the last surviving child from Springwood. However, he's not in any previous movies. We're just told that. He thinks the reason Freddy Krueger let him live is because he's Freddy Krueger's child because we find out in this one, surprise, Freddy Krueger has had a kid before he went to trial and then got killed. That ends up not being true. What Freddy Krueger is doing is he lets this kid survive so that he can lead Freddy Krueger to his actual child so that he can have a new playground to play in because every city has an Elm Street. Um, in this one though, I will say Freddy Krueger is so, this is probably the most comical Freddy Krueger movie. I'm not joking. He is hilarious in this movie. He has the most screen time in this film. He's in like almost every scene. He is, it's so absolutely silly. The blood is super minimal, like barely any blood. It's main, it's mainly a comedy. It's a comedy. That's all it is. When our main character goes to a, oh my gosh, in this one, the main character dies too. Wow, that's, that's just like a reoccurring nightmare on Elm Street theme. But anyways, our main character um, ends up going to kind of like a rehabilitation center for troubled teens uh, where he meets Freddy Krueger's actual daughter, which is a worker there. She starts remembering things from her childhood and here we get a lot of Freddy Krueger's past as well. So we see him actually as a child where he like kills mice and he gets made fun of and he gets beat and yelled at by his dad, who is actually Alice Cooper, which is super dope. We find out that Freddy Krueger actually had a daughter when he was killing children. His wife found out about it and then he killed her. Typical Freddy. In this one, they try to pull him out of their dreams into reality, just like the first one. They actually go into Freddy Krueger's brain too to see his memories, which is where we see a lot of his past. So that's pretty interesting. Here's the weird part. So the origin of Freddy Krueger, we find that we go back and we see him actually be set on fire by the parents of Elm Street and how he turns into this immortal being that he is. Oh guys, I don't even wanna say this. Three fish pop up. Yes, so before, <laughs> In the movie, there is a scene of Greek mythology with three like snake heads, and I don't know if that's what they were trying to replicate, but it was just three, like it just looked like three fish popping up. So I don't, I really don't know the relevance of it, if that's what they were going for, I don't know. But three fish pop up while he's dying, and they say, hey, if you let us live inside of you, you can live forever. And he says, okay, and then they go inside of him. And that is how every Freddy Krueger movie started. In this one, I will say he's much more of a character and less of an obstacle. He has so much screen time and you see so much of his personality, he really does become like a character. He ends up dying when they pull him out of the nightmare or whatever, and then after he dies, those fish fall out of him, kind of showing that he's not immortal anymore and he has in fact died. However, that's not really true, is it? Because we have another movie to talk about. Okay, if you see smoke, it's my humidifier because I'm an old lady and I have a lot of sinus issues. So just, I didn't even think about that. Okay. So let's talk about our last film and that is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. This is a, 99, a 1994 film and Heather Langenkamp is back to reprise her role as Nancy. So this movie is interesting. Freddy Krueger is much different in this movie. His clothes are different. His makeup's different. His glove is different. His demeanor is different. He's not the campy loving Freddy Krueger that we know. He is dark, more menacing. This is a, a 90s meta movie, a movie in a movie. So we find that Wes Craven is writing a new movie. Wes Craven is in this one. And he is having nightmares at night, writing the script each morning. So it comes in pieces to him. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He's asking Heather to play the role of Nancy one last time. So the way that he describes it is he says that Freddy is an entity that's 
old and has lived in many different times in many different forms. However, he likes being Freddy Krueger and he likes our time. So he's doing all that he can to come up into our world. However, Nancy Heather is kind of like the gatekeeper because Nancy had beat Freddy Krueger in the original. So in order to get to our world, he has to beat her to come up through her. He says that when a story is good enough, when the storyteller tells a story that is good enough, they capture that essence for a little while. And when the story dies, that evil is released. And I hope that makes sense. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's actually a really fantastic movie. I mean, I don't know a lot of movie series that can make a seventh version and have it be this great. There's a lot of parallels between this and the first Nightmare on Elm Street film, but I'm going to get to that in the next video because this video, this video is already way too long. This one, Heather is older. She has a son, Dylan. Freddie is actually trying to get him in his sleep. Heather at the end decides to accept the role of Nancy. She ends up going into Freddie's dream world because that's where Dylan is and kind of defeating Freddie on his own turf, which is pretty cool because I don't think any of the other Freddy Krueger movies, to my knowledge, I don't think they ever defeated him by going into his dream, seeking him out, and then defeating him that way. Usually they pull him out in some way or defeat him in some external way. One more thing, Freddy Krueger also has leather pants in this movie. He reminds me a little bit of Ross. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video is long. I only was going to do one Freddy Krueger movie. I was just going to rank the movies. But after watching it, I'm like, there's no way that people know that Freddy Krueger started by fish flying into his body or that a dog resurrected him from his grave by peeing fire on it. I hope you guys like this video. And if you're interested, stick around for the next one because I will rank them all. And that one, again, I'm going to be getting into specific scenes that I love and specific quotes from each movie. So stick around for that. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you tomorrow with another horror video. Bye, guys. Sweet dreams or nightmares.